Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm back at the Sophia M. Sachs Butterfly House with Chris. Hello. Hello, thank you for having us again. No problem, it's been like about a year and a half now, so. Yeah. And we saw you on the news, or as my cameraman saw you on the news, and like, you have to come back. Mm -hmm. So, here we are. And this is a fascinating creature here. So this is a giant palm weevil, which is a kind of beetle. Weevils are very cool, and this is one of the largest in the world. You can see, can you see that long snout that they have? That's what makes a weevil unique. All weevils have that. And they have an extremely hard shell to protect themselves from getting eaten. So let's start off with what defines an insect versus any other um, smaller uh, animal that Good something? question. It's pretty easy to see on these guys. Every insect in the world has six legs, four, five, six. They all have a pair of antenna, which you can see on this guy's head. And they all have three body parts, which are sometimes hard to count, but they're all there. A head, thorax, and abdomen. And um, these are for the, our next video, but with these millipedes over here, like they obviously have way more than just six legs. Correct. So you've got millipedes, you have spiders and scorpions, you have centipedes, and you have many other arthropods that are close relatives to these guys that are not insects. And what are some of the other animals that would be considered a good insect? There's a long list. You got ants, bees, wasps, you have praying mantises and walking sticks and cockroaches and flies and butterflies and moths and many, many others. Just a whole bunch. A whole bunch. Insects are the most diverse group of animals on the planet. So where can you find these weevils at? This particular one, you'd have to go to Southeast Asia to find. We have weevils all over North America too. Some of them are not as big as this, but quite sizable. Most of them are very small. Weevils are found inside acorns. Weevils are found free living on plants. Weevils are found in all sorts of places. And like around like this area, like, uh, do we have any? Probably not, mm -hmm. not of this size. Not of this size, no. Um, this is a very, very large one. About how big are the ones around here? It varies tremendously. So you'll, you'll have some that are the size of a little bean or pea. And you'll have some that are, you know, an inch or so long. Those are the really big ones for around here. Mm -hmm. And what would these uh, weevils eat in the wild? So weevils are interesting because as adults, especially this guy, which I'll get back out again, they tend to stick that nose of theirs down into soft fruits or tree, wounds in trees that are bleeding sap, and they eat that. Like, they love to eat bananas here at the butterfly house because it's soft and sweet. But almost every weevil lays its eggs inside a plant, so the babies will actually eat living plant tissue. Right. So, and they can, some of them can be highly destructive. Like the boll weevil was a plague to the cotton industry. And um, it was still around today, but it's not like an epidemic as it was back in the time of heavy cotton plantations. Mm -hmm. And obviously, like this, in the term of animals, it's not that big. So what animals would try to prey on a weevil? There's lots of things that eat insects. You'd have birds, you'd have mammals, you know, things like monkeys or even like the analogous things in Southeast Asia to our raccoons and squirrels, those little mammals that scurry around everywhere. They'd love to eat an insect. So anything that can eat it probably will. And that's why it has such a hard shell. Its shell is really, really hard. To give you an example, like you know, after these guys die, a lot of people like to make insect collections. We have to put a pin through it. Well, trying to put a pin through these guys, sometimes you feel like you need a drill to make a starter hole. Really? They're so hard. Yeah. So what other adaptations do they have for protecting themselves? Because obviously they have a really hard exoskeleton. They do, and that, that's their main protection. Camouflage a bit too, because you can see they're kind of earth colored. Mm -hmm. But they also have incredibly strong legs. Like trying to get these guys off of something when they have a grip on it is very difficult. And of course there's six legs, so you have to get all six to let go. And if they do manage to actually grab onto, you know, say my finger, they can really dig in and it's pretty painful. That's why I'm not holding it on my hand right now. So what's one of your favorite things about these weevils? The size, the color. I think they're very pretty to look at. I love sharing all the biological facts like I just shared with you all. And I just think they're really amazing to think that there's an insect out there of this size that has all those adaptations for survival. And now that we just talked about a beetle and an insect, mm -hmm. let's move on to this millipede. Right. Which obviously is not an insect. Obviously not. It has way too many legs to be an insect. 
So this is a giant Malaysian millipede. It's one of the largest millipedes in the world, certainly in the running with a few others. But as you can see, it has legs all the way down its body. And before you ask how many, I haven't counted. To count, you'd, have to, you'd have to count up all of the body segments and multiply by four because millipedes have four legs on every body segment. And during that close-up shot, you can just see how many body segments there are. There's a lot. This millipede probably has several hundred legs altogether, maybe approaching 300 legs. Wow. Mm -hmm. Which is a lot. And the name millipede actually means 1,000 feet, but I don't know of a millipede that actually has 1,000 feet. There may be one out there, but most of the ones, even really big ones like this, only have a few hundred. And it is also like fascinating to see their legs move. Mm -hmm. It's kind of how they move in a wave pattern. Absolutely. I don't know how you control that many legs, because I have a hard time with two sometimes. But yeah, they just move in a perfect wave down the body. And as you can see, the millipede's pretty good at moving around. I have two smaller millipedes at home. Mm -hmm. They're not anywhere close to this big. But when I do see them out from underground, just seeing them move is so mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, they're fascinating. And all millipedes um, share a close relationship with the centipedes, which are very similar looking, but quite different. Millipedes eat plants, usually rotting, decomposing things, everything from vegetation to fruits, to maybe mushrooms or rotting wood even. Centipedes are predators. Very different lifestyles. So with the millipede eating plants, what do you feed them here typically? Well, in captivity, we try to feed them a variety of different things. We feed them broccoli and lettuce leaves to get some greens. We feed them apples, cucumbers, and other kinds of fruits. We also put many brown dead leaves in there so that as those slowly break down, they can munch on those too if they want to. Kind of give them uh, enrichment and some, like, more natural behaviors to do. Right. We have to respect that while we're keeping them in captivity, in nature they have a whole forest to crawl through and they're probably finding micronutrients and little things here and there. So we want to try to give them a variety so they're always getting a complete diet. So, how does this coloration help them in the wild? I'm sure it's for camouflage. Sure. So, yeah, it's for camouflage, exactly. So they're fairly earth covered. So as they're crawling around on the ground, under leaves, around logs and things like that, they can escape notice of many predators. I'm so just so entranced with these legs and how they move. Mm -hmm. You can uh, see them just go like a uh, wave down the body. Yep. I just think that's so cool. With a big millipede like that, it's pretty fascinating to watch. Millipedes have a secret weapon that you can't necessarily see. A great many of them produce a very noxious, sometimes toxic substance that only affects you when you eat them, so don't, don't worry. Okay, so I'm good. But unless you decide to take a bite here, I don't think you're going to though. So, but for birds and things that would take a bite, they quickly spit it back out. And like I'm saying, in, in some millipedes, those, those chemicals even include um, really nasty, poisonous things that you wouldn't want to mess with. If that's a really good deterrent for it. Yeah, like it, birds. Like it, if a bird was to see this, like, oh, mm -hmm. I've tried one of those before, and it's not, it doesn't taste good. Definitely. They're definitely. not going to want to eat it again. And that explains why the millipede is so slow. It's definitely not going to be running away from things but it has a pretty nasty secret weapon saved on it. As you can see here, it's not moving that fast. Nope. It probably could move a little bit faster if it wanted to, but... It's about at max speed right yeah. now. So this is one of the largest millipedes in the world. People can find millipedes pretty much wherever they happen to live. The vast majority of the world's millipedes are small, just an inch or so in length. But then, you know, every now and then, even here where we are in North America, the biggest millipede we have can reach a few inches in length. And how are millipedes good for the environment? They're incredibly important for the environment. They're decomposers. And I don't know how often people stop to think about it, but without animals like millipedes breaking down organic matter and you know, pooping it out and enriching the soil with those organics, we don't have good soil for the plants to grow in and stop and think about what a world without plants would look like, and you know that's no good. We want to eat a whole yes. lot. And, you know, decomposers enrich the soil and give the plants the food they need. And, like, without plants, if we want to be able to eat, a bunch of animals would go extinct. Mm -hmm. Right. And do, like, animals like these guys in, like, earthworms, for example, like, digging in the ground, helping plants. Right. This helps everyone out in the long run. Sure. It's a, it's a crucial link in the ecology of every ecosystem. Like, we think about pollinators and how important they are and they need protecting, and they absolutely do. 
but there's not a thing in nature that doesn't have its place. And my final question for you is, what is your favorite thing about this millipede? My favorite thing about this millipede is watching its legs move, just like yours is. But I also love the size of it and the fact that I can use it for education programs and everyone can experience it safely and gets to touch it and marvel at the wonder of it. It's kind of like a larger model of like any other millipede. So if you're trying mm -hmm. to like show people like a millipede in their backyard, this is a larger model of it. Basically, yes. Mm -hmm. Let's put this guy back in his little container. And I'll take him back from you then. I'll just let him walk into my hand. And thank you so much for telling us about the, the weevil and this millipede. Oh, you're very welcome. And I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Cole Shirt. As always, I'll see you next week.